Hi, Nick Coles from Data Trek here, and this is part two of our discussion about disruptive innovation. And we've got a really juicy topic, which is how do you value Tesla stock? I mean, I can't think of a name that has made or killed more Wall Street careers than Tesla over the last five years. People have made a fortune being long and lost a lot of money in most places being short. It's been a super st hard stock to call. So I think it's a great way to discuss how stock markets value disruptive innovation. I come at this from two perspectives. Uh, the first is I was a fundamental analyst covering the auto industry from 1991 to 1999 at the old First Boston, later Credit Suisse. Then I did the same job for Steve Cohen at the old SAC for three years after that. So I come at this from a very fundamental perspective of what makes an auto company tick. The second way I look at things is from the, the perspective of disruption. And we've got a disruption section in our morning markets briefing at Data Trek every single day because it is that important a topic. And by doing that for the last six years, I've come to learn how venture capital thinks about big opportunities and disruption. And in order to understand Tesla, you've got to merge the two ideas, not just fundamental analysis, but also disruption. So let's talk about how to do that with three different approaches. The first is very simple, price earnings multiples. This is the way the street kind of looks at everything. And the math is very straightforward. Tesla should earn five bucks a share next year. That on a $250 stock price makes for a 50 multiple, simple math. That looks really expensive. And I think that's probably the biggest bear case on, on Tesla is that it just looks very, very expensive. The S&P trades for 19 times earnings, Ford and GM trade for seven and five times earnings respectively. So by either one of those metrics, Tesla looks super expensive. There's a problem though, and I'll illustrate why through a little story. Um, back at the old SAC, Steve would often call the analysts in every morning to discuss their best ideas. And one day a, a junior analyst, kind of new to the team, walks in and says, Steve, I've got a great idea for you. It only trades for 10 times earnings. We gotta get super long, the stock's going up. And Steve took a step back and said, hey, tell me about price earnings multiples. I don't really understand them. Now, the rest of us knew that Steve was really baiting this guy because Steve understands every valuation metric under the sun and, and has for decades. But the analyst took the bait and so he holds up his calculator, you know, an HP12C, says, okay, here's how you do it. And uh, Steve says, huh, does everybody have one of these? And the analyst begins to realize he's made a major faux pas and says, yes, Steve, we all have these. And Steve said, that's the problem with your story. If everybody has the math, everybody has access to this information, then it's not an edge. Go find information the market doesn't really appreciate. That's an investment edge. And Steve's absolutely right. Simple math like that is not an investment edge. We can't really use PE multiples to value Tesla. So let's move on. Second approach. We gotta decompose what Tesla's trading for on current valuations, current reality, and then what the market expects from future reality. And the way to do that is pretty straightforward and actually leverages a little bit of the PE math. Again, take that $5 a share Tesla's supposed to earn next year. Divide it by 0.1, that's 10%, which is a good cost of capital assumption for most companies, most large companies. <clears throat> and you get to a stock price of 50 bucks. Now that's interesting because Tesla trades for $250. So we know that 20% of Tesla's valuation is driven by what's happening right now with the near future. And 80% is what's gonna happen over the very long term. And that's a pretty big number. To give you a little bit of perspective, Apple trades for 40% current value and 60% future value. Basically it's gonna earn $7 a share next year Divide that by 0.1, you get $70, stock trades for 180, 40%, 60% current and future earnings potential. GM, just to give you an auto stock comparison, is gonna also gonna earn $7 a share next year, according to Wall Street. Also worth $70. However, the stock trades for 35. So GM trades for half of its present value, meaning what it can earn, what it should be worth if it can earn $70 forever. And that tells you the market is kind of skeptical about GM's long-term potential. The market's saying, look, best case, GM can earn half of that $7 over the long term, the $35 per share stock price. And by both of these measures, Tesla is probably pretty fairly valued here because on the case of GM versus Tesla, GM may not make it over the next 20 years. The transition to EVs is gonna be super hard for the global auto industry. It's really gonna crush margins and cause a lot of very expensive R&D to be spent, even if companies don't actually get to the other side. Uh, 
Tesla's already done that work, it doesn't have any internal combustion engine vehicle products, and so it doesn't have to worry about that. Tesla will make it, GM may not. On the Apple versus Tesla side, Apple's got a lower valuation on future growth, 60% versus the 80% in Tesla stock. And that's probably fair as well, because Apple's a juggernaut, obviously, but it may not grow as fast. It doesn't really create a lot of brand new, new products the way Tesla has over the last decade with EVs. And so by both of these measures, Tesla looks pretty fa fairly valued, not too expensive, not too cheap. Let's move on to the third way. And that is to discuss that 80% of Tesla's valuation that's driven by expectations for future growth. What causes that? Because it can't be EVs. Making cars is not all that profitable. And making EVs will not be structurally a lot more profitable than internal combustion engine vehicles. It's still a complex, very difficult product to build. And global capacity being what it is, car companies don't make a lot of money. Now, even Elon Musk has said this. He has said, look, the value of Tesla is not in making the cars. The value of Tesla is in autonomous driving, where you don't need somebody driving and paying attention 100% of the time in order to get a vehicle from point A to point B. And he's absolutely right. The question is, what is that worth? Now, global GDP is about $100 trillion this year. And let's say that autonomous vehicles are worth 5% of that, just to pick a number. That means you got a $5 trillion opportunity <clears throat> in autonomous vehicles. Tesla's future valuation is roughly $630 billion, or about 13% of that total opportunity. Now, that's probably about right for right now because it's a big challenge, but there is kind of one ace in the hole. Tesla has shown that when it innovates a technology, other car companies follow. So, for example, it's charging protocols and it's charging hardware every other car company is beginning to adopt. So it does show that when Tesla develops something new, it can get other car companies to follow. And that's the critical thing. If Teslas can get to a truly autonomous driving where you don't need a driver at all, that opportunity is huge. And Tesla stock <clears throat> can be worth a whole lot more than today. If it can't come up with that technology and scale it, then Tesla is worth much, much less. So let's wrap up. Three takeaways here. Tesla is going to be volatile for a long time to come because it's pretty much an option on a new technology, and options are always more volatile than underlying stocks. So if you own Tesla, just be prepared for a lot more volatility, and that's just the way it's going to have to be because it's an option more than a stock. The second is the AV technology is super important to develop, and I can't stress that enough. Tesla's got to get to truly autonomous vehicles sometime fairly soon because other car companies and other tech companies are working on the same kind of issue. Google, for example, has Waymo, and they're making a lot of good progress there as well. So it's very important that Tesla get to AVs, say, in the next five years. That's a big, big challenge. And back to our, my prior point, it's an option valuation, not a stock valuation, because the upside is potentially huge, but the chance of getting there is still fairly small. And then finally, and this is really the core message of what I want to talk about, valuing disruption is always about valuing what you believe the future is going to look like. In the case of Tesla, you have to believe that Tesla will develop autonomous vehicle technology fairly quickly. It's already gone a long way down the road, but it's still got a lot further to go, both in terms of the technology and then getting regulators to accept it. So as with always, with disruption, you have to believe in a very specific future and believe that the company you're backing can get there. So for right now, Tesla looks fairly valued, but again, ask yourself, what do I believe? If you believe that Elon Musk can come up with AV technology and scale it, then Tesla's obviously a buy. If you have any doubts about that, just understand that as those probabilities go up and down as the, as the market makes those judgments, that stock's gonna be super volatile, not just this year, next year, but for quite a while to come. So I hope that was interesting and, and helpful for you. If you liked it, then please obviously hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also check out our work at datatrekresearch.com and sign up for a two week free trial if you'd like. Thanks very much and have a great day.